Hey there, are you an older runner not getting the results you expect from your running? Well, hang on for a minute and let me explain why. And it probably has more to do with what you're doing when you're not running than it does with your actual running. Hi, I'm Herb the Forever Runner. I'm a heart attack survivor, ultra runner, and running coach. And I use my Forever Runner method to help runners specifically in their 50s, 60s, and 70s to run forever faster, even while they age. So, so you've been putting in the work for the last several weeks or several months, and you just don't seem to be getting there. Well, I, I would say that that's probably because of three main things. So let, let me go through those. So the so the first one has to do with not enough recovery between your runs. Now, the, the, the problem that we all run into is you, you find some great training plan on the internet. Uh, uh, someone, someone recommends a magazine article with some great training plan or you keep using the same training plan you have for the last 15 years. And it, it basically doesn't reflect where you are right now with your running and with your age. And as we get older, you, you just need to recover more between exercise, um, exercise events such, such as running. So if you're in that mindset that I got to get out there every day, uh, no matter how I feel, um, you could be just waste wasting your time be because you're you're going out while you're not totally rested and you're just depleting more resources than building resources for your running. So it it's it's a couple simple rules uh, to follow. Uh, uh, you know, basically if, if you can, it really helps to be able to uh, check your heart rate every morning or even better, your, your heart rate variability, uh, which will, will give you a kind of a guide over, over a period of a few days or a few weeks of, of whether you're recovering enough after your runs. If you see your heart rate is slowly going up every morning, then that, that shows that you're not getting enough recovery and rest between your runs. The other, the other thing you can do is basically just go by feel. And if you're not really feeling it that day, just don't run. It's not, it's not going to destroy you to miss a day of running. And at the very least, you could just go out and do either a very short run, a very slow run, or just go for a long walk and take the dog. <laughs> but, you know, this, this feeling that we get that we, we have to get out there to improve this, this no gain without pain mentality will, will destroy you. And that's one of the main reasons so many of us runners get injured and and us older runners uh, end up quitting running altogether just because it's it's just not worth it. It's too painful. It's too hard to get out the door. So so number one, pay pay attention to your uh, to your recovery and listen to your body. And it, if you're not feeling it, don't press it. You're you're, you're not gaining anything. Now. The, the second reason uh, that you might not be seeing results is when you're not running, you're not doing anything else. <laughs> you, you, might have, uh, uh, you, you might have remembered, uh, you, know, you know, how bad sitting is. You, you know, sitting is like, you know, the next worst thing to, to having a heart attack or something. But um, it, it, it's it's really true. They've actually studied this. If you go out and run for 30 minutes or 45 minutes, 
and then the rest of the day you're just laying around not doing anything, you, you basically don't create any adaptations in your body to improve your physical fitness. It, you know, it just doesn't happen. So you, you need to be in the mindset that, that you're up and moving during the day. And uh, some days running is going to be part of that, and some days it isn't. Uh, but just, you know, for me, I, I, I was in a, you know, office QB land, you know, at my desk. So, you know, I get up, I sit in the car to commute. I go sit in my QB, uh, you know, all day and then sit in my car to commute. And then I come back and do my run and then I got to rest. And so I'd be on the couch after that. Well, you know, you're just not getting anywhere. It, it, if you're in that uh, work environment, either at home or in an office where you're sitting all the time, get a stand-up desk, just, just like uh, what I use. It, it doesn't have to be anything fancy or expensive. You can just even pile some boxes up. But if, if you spend the majority of your day standing, in moving around, that's going to do nothing but help your run training. And the other thing that you can do during the day when when you have a stand up desk is every twenty minutes you you can move you know make sure you move around. Uh, you can do some squats. You can do some lunges. Uh, you can drop down on the floor and do some push ups. Even do a plank. Um, all these little movements during the day help keep your system activated so that when you actually go running, your, your body is ready to run and you can get those adaptations of, of running uh, be, because your body is ready for it. So it's a, I, th I think it's called, yeah, don't, don't be an active couch potato. That's, that's the term uh, that that we would call someone who, who does that, just lays around and then goes out and run. Now you might've been able to do that in your twenties or whatever, but uh, nah, it doesn't, doesn't work for us when, when you're in your fifties, sixties and seventies. So, so the third thing is, is that if you're not really seeing the results, it, it, it could be that you're, you're just not maintaining your strength like you should. I, I, th I think you're well aware that we lose strength and muscle mass as we get older. It's just kind of a natural process. However, the cool thing about it is you can reverse that just by doing some dedicated strength work. So it's, it's so important as we get older that we do additional strength work even though you're running a lot, to maintain and or even build more muscle mass. That's, that's one of the biggest criteria for maintaining longevity. And if you want to be an athlete or an endurance athlete uh, into your 60s, 70s, or 80s, uh, that's got to be a key component of, of, of your training for your running. And you don't have to do a lot. Uh, you can start off with just uh, body weight exercises. There are, uh, there are five that I recommend. That's doing the planks, doing push-ups, doing the squats, doing the lunges, and pull-ups. Um, uh, you can do those at least three days, three days a week or more uh, just to get started. And then once you're once you're getting good at at doing those squats and lunges and such, then you can start adding some weight, either dumbbells or a kettlebell or like out in my yard, I use a big rock, uh, just some weight uh, to add more for that uh, strength resistance training. And then if you want to graduate. Uh, to an actual gym and you've got a trainer, then you can do Olympic wakes. And, and I, I recommend uh, doing low reps, heavy 
heavy weights. And uh, it's, it's really necessary as we get older. So again, if you're out there doing the running, feel you're doing everything right, but not getting your results, just bear in mind those three things. Number one, make sure you're recovering enough. Number two, make sure you're not sitting on your butt all day or laying on the couch all day. And number three, incorporate some dedicated strength training uh, during, during the week. And, uh, you know, during the winter time is a great time to do that uh, uh, at least three times a week if, if you can. Uh, and get that going all through the winter. And you'll, you'll see some dramatic results uh, come springtime uh, with, with your uh, ease, ease of running. So all, all that's just one part of my, my nine step forever runner method program. So if, if you're interested in, in being able to run faster as you get older, then uh, click description down below. Uh, there's a link to my website and there you can, you can get my forever runner method guide. And uh, there's a, a video training video that kind of explains the program. And if that makes sense for you, then you can uh, uh, hit the button and schedule a call and we can, we can chat, see if this is something that would work for you. So Thanks a lot, and we'll see you in the next one.